If you are a fan of U.S. history, the book series I'm going to be discussing today might very well be worthwhile for you. Today we are going to be reviewing the first in a trilogy of books on the life of President Theodore Roosevelt. This series of biographies written by the late author Edmund Morris began in 1979 with the rise of Theodore Roosevelt. Subsequently, Theodore Rex was published later on in 2001, and Colonel Roosevelt was finally put through in 2010. Based on this timeline alone, it's not hard to imagine what a monumental task it was to compile the amount of information needed to compose these biographies. It's also a pretty good indicator as to just how eventful and interesting Theodore Roosevelt's 60 years of life must have been. The major takeaway from reading The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt was just how incredibly detailed Edmund Morris is in recounting his life for us from the moment of his birth all the way to his ascension to the presidency. Much like Roosevelt himself, the narrative of the book carries this vigorous and unyielding momentum that makes it so difficult to put down at times. While the genre of this series is a historical non-fiction biography, it has all the drama, excitement, tragedy, and triumph of an epic novel. The life that T.R. lived was like one of a storybook character and leads you to become not only fascinated by his life, but emotionally invested in him and the people around him. The short of it is that The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt is a meticulously crafted masterpiece. Morris includes a plethora of photographs and sketches from that time period and brilliantly incorporates a poem throughout the book at the beginning of each chapter called The Saga of King Olaf by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I love this particular detail because the storyline of the poem follows along so perfectly to the life of Theodore Roosevelt that it seems like it was made for him despite being written four years after he was born. To provide a crude outline, the book covers in detail his childhood through teenage years and how he transitioned from a Harvard man to a state senator in New York. It then goes on to chronicle his time as a ranchman, civil service commissioner, police commissioner in New York, assistant secretary to the Navy, the colonel of a volunteer cavalry regiment, better known as the Rough Riders, during the Spanish-American War, this paved the way for his campaign to become governor of New York, and then finally vice president to William McKinley. This, of course, doesn't include the fact that he was also a highly successful author, having written 24 books before becoming president. He began his writing career with the Naval War of 1812 while he was a graduate student at Columbia Law School. By this time, he was already married to his first wife, Alice Lee Hathaway. He continued to have several other literary successes during his time before becoming president, such as The Winning of the West, Hunting Trips of a Ranchman, and of course The Rough Riders. The 780-page introduction to the life of Theodore Roosevelt is undoubtedly a must-have if you're looking to build a personal collection or a home library. The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt reads just as smoothly and energetically as a fast-paced fictional novel, and very well could be one. I mean, we're talking about a man who set out in the freezing cold North Dakota winters with his ranch hands down a river to pursue outlaws who were armed and who had stolen one of their boats. Not even because the boat was an important piece of equipment, but simply for the purpose of upholding the law. The story gets better, though because they ended up pursuing the thieves downriver for a period of three days, in which time Roosevelt completed reading Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. Once they caught up to the outlaws and took them by surprise, at which point they could have rightfully killed them by law, Roosevelt then instead... Instead, Roosevelt arrested them and took it upon himself to transport them safely to the nearest point of civilization to be while already having limited rations between himself and his two helpers. I think it's safe to say that Roosevelt is easily one of the most interesting public figures in American history, and also had a rare sense of integrity that's hard to come by in American politicians, which isn't to say that he didn't have flaws like all men do. Naturally, my plan will be to cover part two and three of this trilogy in the near future, so please stay tuned for the next video.
Thank you for tuning in, and if you are personally curious about any books being reviewed, please feel free to leave any questions or suggestions. As this is a new channel, please do like and subscribe, as well as leave any comments about things which you found useful, along with constructive criticism of things you would like to have seen differently.